In lesson 16, we're going to redo a uh, problem that we did in pro lesson 15, but in a 2D form. So if you remember in lesson 15, I did this analysis. I had this, um, I made this model, and um, there was an extension in here. And right at the center, I had a circle. The dimensions were, if this is a circle, the dimensions were 50 millimeters in here up to this point, and then 50 in here as well. Thickness was one millimeter. This length was uh, 20 millimeters or 40 millimeters. I'm sorry. This radius was also 20 millimeters, and this radius was um, 10 millimeters. And what I did was I fixed this end, this uh, area, and then I applied a pressure of thousand newtons in here. The material was steel with a uh, Elasticity of 200 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio of 0.3. And since this is going to be a 2D model, I'm going to use a shell element and give a thickness of uh, 1 millimeter uh, during the real constant definition. And the fillet of uh, 1 radius in diameter, uh, 1 millimeters in radius is also going to be applied to here. So with this, let's go to ANSYS and do the analysis. Okay. Uh, in ANSYS, what I'm going to pick is, uh, I'm going to do is to come to preferences and click, uh, click structural, and then come to preprocessor and select the element of shell 93 stick to the uh, default options, come to real constants and pick uh, thicknesses of 1, 1, and 1 for all the nodes. Click OK. Material properties, structural, linear, elastic, isotropic, and um, go from here. And in modeling, before doing that, I'm going to turn on my isometric uh, view. I'm going to create some key points in active CS or active coordinate system at x of uh, 0 and y of 20. Click apply and then go to y of uh, 49. Apply and then z of 1. Apply uh, x of 50. Apply and then go to z of 50. Apply. And then I'm also going to make uh, two key points, one in the center or origin and one minus 20 points uh, or minus 20 millimeters in the X direction. Then I'm going to later use that in order to make some arc. So this one is made in here, number six, and number seven is uh, there. Now I want to make some lines, straight lines. First thing I want to do is um, Pick lines one and pick key points one and two. Click apply, and then pick key points four and five. Click apply, and then I want to make a make an arc by end key points. So key points two and four are the end key points. Key point three is the center, and. Uh, Radius is 1. Now, before pr proceeding, I want to come to uh, copy lines and pick all of lines and say copy them in minus 40 millimeters in the y direction. So these are uh, made for me or done for me. What I want to do is to come here and Turn on numbering for key points, and I want to create a couple more lines. 
uh, straight lines from here to here. And then from key point 2 to key point 9, and from key point 4 to key point 10, that is made. Then I want to make a uh, couple arcs from here to here. Okay, this is the center. Okay, then the radius is 20. Okay, and this again from here to here. Okay, the center of there. Okay, and the radius of 20. So my lines are made that I can use to make areas. Let's switch to this view. And let's also turn on uh, line numbering. So line number 8 is there. So you can come and um, say create art areas arbitrary by lines. Pick these lines as I can. And then pick line number 8. See if I can okay, and then again line eight three and six and nine. Okay, it's saying me that these lines are not. Uh, lying in the same plane or they're not planar um, so it's going to make a curve I'm, I'm okay with that and then again I'm going to pick this and this this and line number nine to make an R area so these areas are made for me I'm gonna turn off numberings and because these uh, planes or these uh, yeah these areas are not in the same plane if I want to come here and want to add them together, it's not going to happen, and I will face an error. Let's just do it. So the areas are not planar or not in the same plane. But what I can do is to come here and glue these together, make sure that these areas are um, attached to one another. Then the next thing I want to do is to create an R circle. Right at, the, right at the center with a radius of 10 so this is made and I can come back to operate booleans subtract areas pick this one first okay and then this one okay my areas are uh, made now I want to come to meshing mesh tool and because I'm a little bit concerned about the meshing and, and the number of elements in this uh, model. I'm, I'm not going to pick any smart size or something. I'm just going to pick mesh and pick all and my areas are meshed. However, if you have access to a bare version of ANSYS, I highly encourage you to do a finer mesh at least around this circle because this mesh is very, very coarse and the results are not going to be uh, accurate. But this is just to demonstrate to you uh, demonstrate, how, demonstrate how you can do this uh, in ANSYS. So the meshing is done. I can come to loading analysis type and make sure that I'm doing a static analysis. Now go to define loads, apply structural displacement on areas. Pick this area first and say all DOF or all degrees of freedom be zero. Apply and then come to pressure on lines pick this and this line click OK and a pressure of 1000 Newton meters is applied to these two lines so the model is ready I can go to solution solve current LS OK well because of a uh, course meshing I'm seeing this warning but I, k I click yes and this is it now let's go to uh, plot results deform shape and this is how my material, how my object is deformed based on the loading that I uh, defined for it. Node all in y direction de um, deformation is like this. It's pretty similar to what we did uh, in lesson 15 for the 3D model. In fact, if I come to here, 
or uh, style, size and shape, and turn on this, I will see a 3D representation of this model. I can also go here and see stresses, let's say, phone misses stresses, how they are made. There's not much stress in this model, as we're seeing. And um, also I can go to vector plots, predefined translation. It's uh, pretty much like this. The reason that um, uh, there is not many vectors defined in here is uh, I have a very little number of uh, nodes defined because of my coarse meshing technique. But you have to um, go with a finer and better meshing in order to be able to analyze this model properly. Get back to here and let's see this again. And uh, we can also come to list results and uh, come to nodal solution. Let's see what we get for displacement. So some of the nodes don't have any displacements because we've uh, fixed them. Like those nodes are the nodes that are attached to this face of the material or of the, or of the object, but the others have some displacements. We can also come here, select entities, lines first, binomial pick, apply and pick these four lines, and then select uh, nodes attached to lines all okay come back here and see what we get for displacement for those nodes we can also define um, uh, come here work plane change active CS to global cylindrical and then um, Come to path operations, if you like, and then define path uh, by location. Let's give a path, num name of path 01, and divide that to 80. Okay. The first one I want to give is uh, point 0.1 at x of minus 10 and y of uh, 0. Okay, and the second one is going to be at uh, x of 0 and y of minus 10. So basically I picked this line. And I want to map onto path um, ui, apply, usum, apply, and let's stick with these two for now. You can uh, add as many as you want and come plot on uh, plot path item, ui, apply, so this is basically the deformation of uh, uh, that line and each and every node on that line or, or point on that line um, in y direction. You can also pick u sum. So this is how it changes. I can also come to list results, path items, path 0, 1, and then pick any one you want. Click OK and you will see them in here. So basically this is the end of chapter or lesson 16 uh, which was uh, pretty similar to what we did in lesson 15.